Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So I have started an art journal. It's hardback. Now, I'm not sure what thickness the pages are, but they are quite thick. Probably 140 or 160. I'm assuming there's some sort of mixed media. They're very smooth. So I did this last night with stencils and napkins and stamps and pan pastels fluid acrylic inks and I just kept layering it's a bit dark overall and I made the mistake of putting a pearlescent over this so not only have I changed the paper that I used which is different to everything else I've also then added that in so it's made it a bit it looks odd on the plate on the page anyway I'm going to do another one So, I have lots of pieces of paper and I thought we'll just glue these down on both pages. Just get a paintbrush. I just want to build up a little section over here. Because that's the spine area I just want that I wanted that to be well covered before we even started and I wanted it equally on both sides so that they don't the pages don't pull on each other so I'm just collaging both of these pages so I've just sped up the video at this point because um Gluing the paper on is it's not very exciting. Apologies. I just gessoed it without the camera on. Anyway, here it is. I've paid extra attention to the middle. And I've just reached out all the edges. And I've put on a fairly thick layer with a dry... It's not completely dry. Like, I've towel dried the paintbrush to kind of make the gesso as unwatery as possible. So this is Liquitex Yellow Acrylic Ink. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm going for a vintage paper style. So I'm using the kind of brighter, lighter yellow, more in the middle of the pages. And then I'm going to use high flow acrylics, which are made by Golden. And they're pretty similar to the acrylic inks. Um, and I use Burnt Sienna and Quinacridone Gold. Quinacridone Gold, that's what it is. Um, I use both those colours as well, just to give a sort of graduated look as much as possible. So that's the quinacridone gold. I don't know what I've been playing at with the camera. I must think I'm putting it on 
and I'm switching it off or something. <laughs> so you kind of need to let, you put it on, This it spreads very far, but then you need to give it a wee opportunity to dry slightly so that it doesn't spread as much, so you can blend it. But if you wait too long, it'll just completely dry. <laughs> It's got that kind of faux leather look to it because of the gesso and the matte medium and the collage papers. And there is a shine to the fluid acrylics and the, not the fluid, high flow acrylics and the acrylic inks as well. So the first 11 minutes of this video are really about this vintage paper background. And then after that is about putting on the, you know, decorating it. But obviously once you reach that 11 minutes and you've got that vintage paper background, you could just decorate it with anything. A lot of the tricks with these kind of blending, it, it really is just building up layers, you know, the thin layers. You're not going to get the fully blended look in one layer of the three colours. So after this, I use pan pastels and I use it with a dream big poem stencil that is made well it's not made it's made by pm artist studio but it's designed by froil davies from froil art now because i'm making this a vintage looking background i very much choose the colors of pan pastels that are similar to the colors that are already on the pages so a yellow ochre sienna and i think it is burnt or raw umber um, so I'm very much going for a subtle look and if you happen to watch Froil <laughs> and uh, you know in, a, in another parallel universe if you happen to watch my little small channel then I apologize for not being more flamboyant with your stencil I was going for subtle. I wanted that vintage kind of, you know, old, dusty tomb of a book type look. So we're all, it's all faded and then maybe the sun's burnt in some areas. So that the writing is... It's not legible, really, and... It's more obvious in some areas than others. It also helps because I'm using the different mediums and the stencil. So that puts marks down differently than just swirling the paint about did. That all helps give it the blended, graduated look. I did find that I was maybe a bit too subtle with the pan pastels. <laughs> I ended up going over again. A bit, a bit, a bit thicker. <laughs> but I'm using this watercolour paintbrush. It's completely dry. It's not been near water at all. You know, well, it has in the past, but not today. And it's very soft. See that there? That's just beautiful. It's just, it's just there. But it's not in your face. I didn't really get the other sides as well and I think it's it was darker on the other side but yeah so when you buy the pan pastels they give you those little sponges and I just can't get to grips with them at all and they're very dirty very quickly well they're not dirty they've got colours on them from the pan pastels and I think with the paintbrush I may use more of the pan pastel than I would with the sponge with the sponge but I just find it so much easier to use I find it more effective I just find everything about it's better and 
maybe it's because I'm used to holding a paintbrush as well. So what I've done here is I have sprays, the shimmer sprays by Lindy's sprays. And I sprayed over the stencils and I used a kind of um sepia one and a kind of silvery grey one. Um, because I wanted to keep very much to book type colours. Um, and again, just very subtle, keeping the sepia more on the centre of the page and the grey on the outer page. Wasn't overly successful, but when it dries in, it you could see it more when it dried in. So that's it still wet. I'm just showing you. I'm lifting it up. And then it's just about to be dried. That's it there. So this is 11 minutes. And now we're going on to the decorating of the art journal pages. So this is a script stamp, which um, obviously matches in with Froyle's stencil. Um, with a sort of illegible old style script. And I'm just making little columns from this stamp. Sort of give that newspaper look because newspapers were written in columns. I mean... Technically, this should come under decorating the vintage book page. Not decorating, making the vintage book page background. <laughs> anyway, this book is wonderful. It's got hundreds of pages in it, 1,000 illustrations. They're like etchings. Now, it's I've seen variable prices for this on eBay. Now, I got this from for £6 on eBay and I love it. It's a fabulous book and but I've seen it going for over £20. So if you don't see any really cheap on eBay if you're wanting one, I would hold out because there is quite a lot of them as well. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick flip through just so you can see the sort of um, pictures that are in this book. They're gorgeous. My only disappointment with this book is it does not image transfer on the gel plate at all. The pages are thin, which is good. So I'm choosing a family scene that's going to go across both pages. And what I'm going to do is a Mod Podge image transfer with it. But I'm going, I put the Mod Podge on the wrong side of the one I chose. So I had to get another one. <laughs> I put the Mod Podge on it as if I was going to glue it down. <laughs> but what you want is the Mod Podge on top of the picture that you're going to use. So I just have a wee clean up of my disaster here. I have made a video of Mod Podge image transfers um, and I'll put it in the description. What I've done with this one though, this is just a quick incomplete version and the reason I'm doing it is just to thin the the page down more but also to, to make the page a lot more scrappy as if there's a lot of wear and tear on it. So instead of trying to pull as much of the paper off as possible on the back, I'm really just trying to get a layer off. Now the Mod Podge is dry now. Um, you have to let it dry first. And then I've sprayed it with water and I've put far too much water on. So I rip it more or less right away. But really all I'm doing is See the way that I'm rolling the paper off? Now, if I was doing a proper image transfer onto the Mod Podge, you know, I'd be repeating this process quite a bit and I'd be trying to get more paper off. But here, I'm just really trying to take off that top layer. See, ripped it already. 
but that just enhances it for the purposes of what we are using it for. That's my painting towel. I keep a towel on the desk. It's like, I use it all the time. It's up there with my scoring tool as my top 10 must-haves that you wouldn't think of. <laughs> So this is very easy, a very easy technique to do, even though I'm making it look harder than it is. Um, because we're doing it just for the scrappy look. And I really achieved this. It probably took me 10 to 15 minutes to remove this paper from the back. Um, if I was doing a proper transfer, this, I mean, you would have to let it dry and then wet it again, dry, wet it again. So this paper is really thin, so I mean that layer does come off easily, but it also <laughs> it also pulls the actual layer we want to keep off easy as well. So that's all the bits there. I just kept this in the video so that you could actually see the sort of amount that came off. I've got a big streak of thicker Mod Podge there, but I just put some ink on it and it's fine. Drying off the wetness of the water. And then... Obviously, I want to keep the picture in, but I'm not overly directing the way that I'm tearing it, apart from keeping the picture in, because I want those really scrappy edges that will cling onto the ink. The other thing when you do the Mod Podge transfer that's different as well is what you're actually using is the other side of the page. So you that image... You take enough paper off the back that that image actually shows through the back. But we are using the side with the Mod Podge on it. I mean, you could do a proper image transfer and pull off more and then put it on through the back. But that's a big job. Though it is worth it. It gives a lovely glassine finish to the page. I hope this makes sense, what I'm saying. I just wanted to be able to show what's underneath coming through and I'd spray the back of it as well with the CPS spray and I put black stamping ink around the edges before I put it in the book. That book page is just lovely. I kind of, I thought to myself, I shouldn't even cover this up. I should just keep that and look at it. <laughs> So I use the stencil, you know, to put the CPS spray on with, just to keep, you know, continue the sort of um, marks and the sort of theme that we've had already on the book page. I mean, you can see the image slightly there, but there's still too much paper behind it. And if you were doing a proper image transfer, you would probably be more careful when you're pulling off the back paper than I was. I also put some matte medium over the picture when I have put it into the book because um, to try and take some of the shine off it. And see, because this is quite fragile and I'm not really sure what's water soluble and what's permanent, that I've already put on the book page. I use a glue stick to apply it um, into the journal. I love the scrappy edges of this. I kind of wish I took more of the whiteness off though. You'll see when you put it in, when I put it into the, the journal, it's still just a bit white 
in places for this vintage look that we're going for. But I'll know for next time. Um, because I really loved this. My only disappointment was that compositionally I didn't put it in a good place. So it, it remains, the whole art journal spread remains off balance. You know, it just doesn't sit right. What's happened is I've put it far too much over to the right. So the left space is really crying out for another picture to balance it. Whereas my plan was to use this slightly more over to the right and then just do some more decorating on the left. So, compositionally, it was disappointing. But the idea of it, you know, if it was just more over to the left, it would have been it would have been really lovely. I do keep pulling the book page up because I want the picture, anything that I'm gluing into the art journal, I want it to be, I don't want it to restrict the movement of the book or for the movement of the book to damage the picture. <laughs> So that's just some matte medium to try and take the shine off. I'm not sure how effective it was, but it has helped a bit. So I'm going to stencil some roses onto the side with pan pastels. I was hoping this might take the place of the pitch of a picture. So this is a rose accents stencil designed by Kerry Griffiths for PM Artist Studio. Um, like I said in the previous video, Mariah from PM Artist Studios sent me some of what they call the imperfectly perfect stencils. When I purchased um, some square and circle stencils from them, I go to a lot of their lives. I'm in their Facebook group. So I've kind of got to know them. And because I do have um, a YouTube channel, she sent me a lot of ones that maybe had an imperfection in them when they were made. You know, like maybe there's a, a piece of the stencil hasn't been removed or, you know, there's a tear or something. So that, you know... I can see what I think of them and let you know. These are washi tape stickers from a book that I bought on Amazon um, for £10. And it's basically full pages and it's just one great big washi tape page. And you do need to cut out the pictures or tear them out. Um, so... I didn't really spend any time blending these in. I should have, um, you know, spent some time. I should have maybe stenciled over the top of them. Or maybe did more inking, not just round the edge of the sticker, but in a way that it... Maybe if I inked it while it was on the page, it would have blended more into the background. I feel they look a bit stuck on rather than actually part of the page itself if that makes sense I could have done better finishing touches on them that's what I'm saying I think I should have finished this page with the big Victorian ladies picture and the roses stencil and I think what I've thought to myself is this is an art journal you can't just have two things on the page but there wasn't just two things on the page. There was the big background and then the picture and the flowers would have just enhanced the background. So what's happened here is I've done far too much. I've went over the score and then it's just become messy. And then I'm trying to, you know, repair the mess as much as possible. So um, the lesson learned here is that you know, sometimes less is more and it's okay to stop. You 
don't feel like you have to keep going, which is what I did. So this is red acrylic ink. Now, it's naphthanol crimson, but it's also got some of the black stamping ink on it from the, you know, what I stamp with. So it's made this lovely kind of dark brown colour that does look aged. So I was actually really pleased with that. And I've done some of them over the roses as well. But again, it's just become too much and it's made everything... The roses, when I did them with the pan pastels, you know, they really stood out. And then putting more roses over with the acrylic ink and the black pan pastel stenciling with, you know, the, the script has it, it it's all just lost its focus and it's became a bit muted as if it's part of the background which it wasn't meant to be it was meant to be the decorative part so again I've just done too much but do you know what it's still lovely it was a great you know I learned a lot doing this as well so this is it here. I hope you enjoyed and thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.